Hey there, family. I got a quick video that I want to do. I really, I recorded one earlier that I'm going to get posted, but this one I think I got to do because um, this is another warning to the black community, man. Those of you who are taking great pride and uh, taking great pride in what ICE is doing to so-called Hispanics and Latinos, who are most of them are indigenous people. Um, look into a mirror because that will be happening to you. Now, listen, I've made a video and you can find it. Uh, it won't be on this list. It's on the other MT Marathi vault list where I was talking about how um, this, what is happening to so-called Latinos and Hispanics is really retribution for how they have been treating black people. A lot of them have been treating us very, very negatively. And um, this is not something that has been going on for 10 or 15 or 20 years. This has been going on for um, really since the 70s and the 60s, but also a little bit before that, especially those so-called Hispanics and, and, and uh, Latinos who could pass as kind of white. They have treated us as bad as white people. And now many of those same people or at least their complexion, where in their country, they are seen as kind of something special because they have that white skin. So they're not treated as bad, but they're still treated bad as the um, indigenous folk and the Afro-indigenous people living there. So now when they come here, it's like um, this mulatto dude that I know who is from a country from overseas. And in his country, which is full of black people, um, he is treated like a god because he got that white blood in him. And so the colonizers treat him really, really well. Well, he came over here thinking that was going to fly and come to find out, no, you are just a nigga. And it kind of hurt him a little bit, uh, a lot. A lot of these Hispanics who, uh, so-called Hispanics and Latinos, who in their native lands look kind of white, treated those people like trash and taught those people to hate darker skinned people than themselves. Now they come here and they're getting beat up on and they can't understand why. Yeah, I made that video and that is true. All of that still stands, including the indigenous people who are darker skinned, but lighter skinned than me and you who came here and treated us like trash because of who we are, who, who, who was afraid of us and treated us like we were criminals in, in this country because of who we are. All of that still stands. That said, if you take great pride in what is happening to them, if you look at them and not say, you know, with humility, as is the reason why I did it, because I need them to understand they need to reform their ways when it comes to this. If this is just a bit of um, the German word schadenfreude, if, if I'm saying it correctly, where you're taking joy from their misery, you are setting up our people to be in their place because once when they're done with them they're coming after you never forget when you look at the people and i did i i talked about this a lot of the people that they show look kind of white but the majority of the people and they're starting to finally have to show them because i you know I'm, it's not me but i've talked about this i've seen other people somewhat talk about it too how the cameras always attract to the white people or the white looking people. Well, the majority of the people who they're going after are, are um, brown skin, red skin, black skin. They're not talking to too many Latino, Hispanic blacks, so-called Latino and Hispanics. Words that started being used heavily in the 70s to separate them from indigenous people and make them less susceptible to joining up uh, in force with black people. Um, they, they, um, one second, family, one second, one second. They are, they're now going down the food chain, basically, for themselves. They are going after them and going after the red and the somewhat white and the brown. And trust me, when they get done with them, they coming after you. And if you are taking pride in what's going on with these people, you are setting up our community to be devastated. Louis Farrakhan mentioned something. 
in one of his talks, I think it was earlier this year, might have been last year, man, this is, these last two years, man, Oof. anyway, he said, he reminded his, his, his followers in the nation of Islam, he said, didn't I tell you that the military would be coming into your cities? Didn't I tell you that? Now, this came on the heels of Trump saying that he would, uh, he, he was considering sending the military in to curb the violence in the black communities. Now, family, we got to understand something. And I, I, I'm not going to get into this because I'm going to get into it a lot more this weekend, but we need to understand this. A lot of the violence that's in our community is not done by black people or let me back up. It's done by black people, but it is not orchestrated by black people. And that's all I'm going to say presently about that, but it's not. And there's a lot of conflation and configuration that's going on with numbers that just, it's not accurate sometimes. And sometimes even there, there is a structural mechanism in place to target black people in our communities to make us fearful, to fragment our communities, to shatter our community bonds, all of that. And it's not orchestrated by black people. It is orchestrated by our enemies. And it's time that we understand that. He was talking about that. And the Democratic Party has been privy to this. That's what the, 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 the deeper we've gotten in with the Democratic Party, the worse the violence has gotten in our community. So Trump was talking about this, and I want you to understand, while I'm not a supporter of Trump, and I don't want the military in the black community, what I need you to get is we are now in the middle of a upper class civil war, at least the beginning shots of it. And it could get to a point where you see fighting on the streets, not by us, so you know, per se, but by the factions themselves and by representatives of those factions. Don't forget, when you're talking about fighting on in, in the upper uh, upper elite, you're talking about people who will have representatives fighting for them. Lest those representatives turn on them, and then that's a whole other game. But what he was essentially warning us about is the coming um, execution against our people of this this. Oh my God, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? And I can't even, I can't believe I'm forgetting it right now. Um, it's the King something. So if you guys know what that is, please put it down in, in the comments. But um, uh, the King something plan. Anyway, um, that's, that's what he's talking about. And we, where our mindset is, where our mindset is will determine how bad King Alfred plan. There we go. The King Alfred plan. Um, where our mindset is will depend on how far into that destruction we go. If we are celebratory of other people having these things done to themselves, if we are celebratory, I don't care if it's the Jews and the Jews had, you know, a million hands in slavery and they had a lot of hands in slavery. You don't celebrate it. You do not celebrate it. You work through the feelings and the notions that you have of wanting to be happy that they're dragging off Hispanics, that they're dragging off Latinos. You work through those feelings and you get rid of them because you will be locking yourself and your community up to for this destruction. You got to get smart about this. What you think does happen and the most high is paying attention to us right now. Are we being compassionate in areas where we have been screwed over? Or are we hoping for devastation, destruction, and ruin? Because if we are hoping for devastation, destruction, and ruin, we are we 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 are not sowing the wind this time, man. We are reaping the whirlwind from our own dis, from our own uh dispassion and our own uh despotism, our own internal despotism. The one thing that I agree wholeheartedly with Bobby Hammond on is that how we feel internally has a major impact on what happens externally. And if we are not careful, we will create situations externally that are far worse than where we are at right now. And that has a lot to do with 
how we treat those who have been treating us negatively. Now, yes, you know, sometimes in order to make progress, you're going to have to take on those who have been in your way and just won't get out your way. And yet that's a different story. That's a different story. I'm talking now about persecution. I'm talking about persecution. You are seeing uh, indigenous people now called Hispanics and Latinos, but they're not. Uh, that aligns them, by the way, with the European possessive spirit by calling them Hispanics, so-called Spaniards and Latinos, so-called um, Southern Europeans. None of that is true. Um, that aligns them with that possessive European spirit, allows them to be manipulated by the Catholic Church and other entities on a spiritual level and on a psychic level. Um, if we are celebrating them being mistreated, don't forget, you are called an African-American. You haven't even defined what America is, but they have. America is part of the European, the pan-European um, spiritual or, or spiritual network across the world. So when you say you're African-American, you are attaching to that pan-European spirit, which is now in deep, dark decline and destruction. It is fragmenting. You are setting yourself up to be a part of that destruction and that decline and that fragmentation. When they come, they will come directly for you because you will be marked. You will be marked. The mark of the, pe the, mark of the beast, ladies and gentlemen, outside of all the other stuff, metaphysics, it's positive for black people, yada, 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 yada. You got to look at it with multiple layers. You got to look at it with multiple layers. The mark of the beast is connected to that spiritual entity, that essence of Babylon, and when that beast comes up to start really devouring and destroying and, de and, and trying to save um, its offspring before it is totally destroyed, hopefully, again, that depends on where our mind's at, all the people who have bought into that reality, bought into um, his slaughter, some of which some of these people will be sacrifices in their own minds and on their own hearts, um, they will be marked. They will be marked. There is a video. I can't remember the name of the dang song, though. I want to say it. See, I want to say it was 100 days, but I don't. Or when you only or 100 years or something. But it, it, it wasn't that. There's a video that came out years ago, years ago, like over 10 years ago, I think now. And um, the singer of the song was walking around the town and everybody had these clocks over the top of their their head um it was just kind of floating there right and so he he didn't understand like wait a minute why am i seeing these clocks on everybody wow you know and then he passed by somebody who was being loaded into a ambulance and that person's clock was either at zero or counting down towards zero and he kind of was like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, that's, hmm. And he started figuring out that what he was seeing was how much time people had left, basically. And it, it shocked him. This is essentially the spiritual essence of what's happening presently, is a lot of people are what they call shaving time, adding time, according to their thoughts and their actions, com you know, compared to the bottleneck, which we're going to be going through, where um, a lot of people, unfortunately, are going to pass away. So we, we have to be prepared to mentally carry our people through this. And that means not getting caught up with this because it, it's going to be us connecting to, uh, to so-called Latino, Hispanics, and... Um, the, the, the few good Europeans that seem to be left, we will be hooking up with them um, and then other Africans and, and other people within the diaspora throughout the world. If we are not cognizant of their struggles and, and not becoming, you know, bottle um, bogged down with that, with, I apologize, family. I'm trying to hurry up because I got stuff to do before I leave. Um, if we, be, if we don't, if we become bogged down in um, these emotions, these negative emotions, uh, in when when we see their struggles and when we see what is happening 
uh, to them at the hands of the colonizers, at the hands of the European who is, you know, dying out over the next 30, 40, 50, 60, well, maybe not. I, I'll say next 100 years. I'll just say 100 years. Um, we're setting ourselves up to shave off a whole lot of time for a lot of people in our community. And look, some of these people we're never going to be able to save. I understand that. I get that. But my concern is there is a, there are people who, um, good people, who need to be, uh, who need to make it through this period of transition. And uh, there are a lot of people who you and others that you know will be giving birth to. And they will be children, teenagers, and young adults during this period of time. And, and if your mind is too corrupted, and it's your children that need to make it through this, this passage, or if it's somebody really close to you that needs to make it through this passage, you're basically setting them up to shave. You're, you're set, you forget about the even setting up. You're shaving time off of their clock based on what you're doing. We are all connected. Social intelligence, family. We are all connected. Social intelligence. We are black people. We set the bar for what it means to be human. We define what it means to be human. And if we don't define it, this world is going to go deeper into hell. And it's because we have dropped that ball over the last 40 years because of what they've done to our music. We've dropped the ball over holding fast what it means to be uh, human because we have dropped it. That's why the world's in, in the mess that it's in. And we've, I mean, it's been progressive. We, it, it, it started back in the sixties when they started hijacking our music. If we don't hold that, then the world goes to hell. It ain't about white people. It ain't about white Jesus. It's about us. Tupac said it, man. Listen to that song, Black Jesus. Listen to that song, Black Jesus. Why do you think so many white people want to be us? We hold the, the archetypes of what it means to be human. And if we cannot hold that archetype, the world will plunge into darkness. And not in a good way either. Not in a good way either. Questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. Family, I got to run. Peace.